going to take a look at uh, building equations to solve story problems. Basically, these are going to be two-step story problems. There's more advanced ones, but we're just going to kind of focus on the basics here. Um, here's the first example. Ted spent $37 total on a magazine and some notepads. If the magazine cost $2 and each notepad cost $5, how many notepads did he buy? And the first thing I wanted to point out was the question of what they want it's going to become your variable for the problem. So if they want you to figure out how many notepads that Ted bought, we need to select a, a variable. In this case, I'm going to choose n to represent the number of notepads. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to start kind of piecing together the information that they gave us. Well, this is a total amount. Okay. So he spent a total of thirty-seven dollars. That's quite a bit for a magazine and some notepads. Um, the other thing that's going on there is is the magazine cost two dollars. And I noticed something else too. It says a magazine. It's not magazines. It's just a magazine. Uh, the magazine cost two dollars. So I know that the magazine has a total cost of two dollars. I also know this. I mean, look, if if we put two dollars into magazines. Wouldn't that make sense that it'd be $35 and, and notepads to equal to 37? Well, I'm not going to write $35 because it might get me off track, but I'm going to write notepads. And uh, basically, I, I do note that um, essentially it's $5 for each notepad. And then they just want to know how many notepads. Okay, so I'm going to write 5 bucks here. And now we're going to see if we can kind of pull everything together to make a nice equation. If I add up the cost of my magazine plus the cost of my notepads, it's going to equal a total of $37. How can I represent $5 for an unknown number of notepads? Well, um, look at it this way. It's $5 for one notepad. It's $10 for two notepads. And you can find the pattern: fifteen for three dollar. Excuse me, fifteen dollars for three notepads, uh, twenty-five dollars for five notepads, so on and so forth. Basically, what we're doing is we're multiplying each notepad by five. So two times five is ten. One times five is five. Ten notepads would cost fifty dollars, and you get the idea. So basically, if we can just take this price of five dollars and multiply it by the number of notepads. We'll figure out how much that we're spending. So, and remember, we already said, wouldn't it be $35 to add to the $2 to equal 37? Well, yeah, and, and, and basically you're asking yourself, how many notepads would I need to buy to equal $35 worth? It'd be seven notepads. So keep that in the back of your mind as we go to solve it. We would subtract two from both sides. We're left with the 35, and then we would divide by the 5. And we would indeed have 7 for the number of notepads that we need. And we just need to restate our question. Hey, Ted bought 7 notepads. So it's this idea of trying to piece together the information with how it would fit to usually a total. You know, we had $37 total. $2 of it was a magazine, and we need to add that to uh, something going on with our notepads. And we knew it was $5 each, but we didn't know the number of them. But if we multiplied $5 for each notepad, five times the number of notepads, um, that would get us a total cost of $35 here, and that would add up to 37 And when we went and solved... Sure enough, we got the right answer of seven notepads. Now, this one shouldn't take as long. And, and what happens is, is generally we go over uh, the first example and, and students uh, kind of freeze, but then they, they kind of zero in and try to set up the exact same type of equation. Well, every story problem, not every story problem, but a lot of story problems are different. So as a result, your equations should be different. Let's just take a look at this. Wilbur won 81 Super Bouncy Balls playing horseshoes at his school's game night. Later, he gave three to each of his friends. He only has six remaining. How many friends does he have? So, here's little Wilbur. Okay. And 
he won 81 bouncy balls. Okay, so I'm going to write this down. That takes care of this. Later, he gave three to each of his friends. So he's going to give away. That's like a subtraction. He gives three to each friend. So that takes care of this sentence right here. He only has six remaining. Okay, so he started with 81, then he started giving them away to his friends, and now he has six left. So it's like 81 minus a bunch of the ones he gave away, and he's down to six right there, and that's the total. So that kind of gives us a little bit of a framework to play around with here. We could say, okay, uh, 81 minus, well, what do they even want us to know? How many friends he has? So let's just say F equals the number of friends. So 81 minus, he gave three to each friend, and we don't know how many friends he has. We just know each friend got three. So couldn't we do the same thing as, as what we did earlier with, we don't know how many magazines, but each magazine cost $5, so we wrote it as 5N. We don't know how many friends he has, but each friend gets three bouncy balls, so couldn't we just write it as three times the number of friends he has? So, for example, if he had no friends, he it would be the same as zero times three, so it would be like he gave nothing away. He had no friends. If he had ten friends, ten times three would be thirty. That would mean he gave away thirty of the bouncy balls. So this idea of three times the number of friends seems to be working for us. But we do know that after he gave away all of those to his friends, he had six left. And now we're able to go solve. So, we find out that he had 25 friends. Wilbur has 25 friends. If you're sitting here and you're going, I, I got an equation, I set it up, and I solved, and I got it for 25, and it's positive 25, chances are your equation is probably correct. There is another way of looking at this situation, and we will. Get a clean page here for us. Basically, if you um, had the remaining six balls that he had, here's the remaining six balls, and you added up um, the balls given away, it would have equaled the original total of 81. Okay, so he kept six, he gave away the rest, but originally these two amounts should add up to be 81. And then you just have to basically go through and write it in like this. Well, six plus the three he gave to each friend would equal 81. And just so you can see, we get the same answer, even though the equation is different. We'll work it out here. And again, this other equation, which is just as correct, gets you the same answer of 25 friends. I've got two more examples. Here's one that's a little bit different. 390 students went on a field trip. 10 buses were filled, and 20 students traveled in cars. Uh, how many students were in each bus? Now, that is assuming that each bus carried the same amount of students. Okay, so we will make that assumption, and that's okay. Um, we have 390 total students. Okay. And it's broken up between the ones that went on buses and the ones that went in cars. They want to know how many students did we have. So... Um, I need to pick a variable to represent the number of students in each bus. I don't want to use an S because, quite frankly, my fives on here could sometimes be considered, you know, the same as an S. And so I, I just, I'm going to use X. X will equal number of students on each bus.
Now, if I add up the, the students in the cars, which is 20, so that'd be 20, with uh, the 10 buses, see that? We've got 10 buses right here. So that's 10 times the number of students on each bus, which would be x. We know that it would equal up to a total of 390. So once we divide both sides by 10, we'd find out that there are 37 students on each bus. Um, there are different ways you could set this up. You could say 390 uh, minus the number of kids on the bus equals 20. Uh, you could say 390 uh, minus the 20 would would equal uh, the number of kids on the bus, but you know this is probably the, the easiest setup right here. Um, let's take a look at the very last one, and, and I like this one because anytime that you, you throw in a, an equation like this or a story problem like this, it usually causes some issues. People know the answer. They can figure out the answer, but trying to write the equation becomes a little bit difficult. Nicole is going to sell all of her stamp collection to buy a video game, and after selling half of them she decided well why I, I don't want to sell them anymore so then instead of selling the rest of it she decided to buy 19 more how many did she start with if she's now got 39 so um i have the same issue again we're talking about stamps which starts with the letter s and my s's sometimes look like fives so um, we're going to use x again uh, x equals number of stamps Nicole had originally, or originally had. Now, let's just go through and read it. After selling half, well, how can I show half of x? Well, one way is just to show, just to show x is divided by 2. Half of x. She then bought 19 more. How do we show that she bought 19 more? Plus 19. How many does she start with if she now has 39? So she's now got 39 after selling half of her collection, which is represented here. And then she bought 19 more on top of that half collection. And she's got 39. And we're free to go solve now. So basically, she had 40 stamps to start with. If she had 40 stamps and sold half of them, that'd leave her with 20. And then if you add 19 on top of 20, that'd get you 39. So that is correct. Nicole had 40 stamps to start with. Now, um... Let's just scroll down just a little bit more, and I'm going to rewrite that equation right here just to, to look at a few other possibilities. This won't cover all the possibilities most likely, but we'll just take a look at them. Um, how can we write half of x as another way? Well, you can write it as 1 half x plus 19 equals 39. So you'd still minus 19 on both sides, and you'd wind up with this. And then since 1 half is... Um, Multiplying the x, you would divide both by one half, okay? And you would still get 40 when you're all said and done. So that's another way that you could write the equation. Um, and if you don't like using fractions and you don't like using that little division, you know, sign like that, uh, another thing you can do is you can go, well, well, half written as a decimal is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 times x plus 19 would equal 39. So, I mean, that would work just as easily. Um, and in fact, let's go through and try it just to show it to you. Um, we'd get 0.5x equals 20. And since 0.5 is multiplying the x, you would divide both by 0.5. And 20 divided by 0.5 is 40. So, 
when you're building these equations, I don't want you to think that there's only one equation. There's a lot of different subtleties, a lot of different varieties to the situation that you could uh, put down in your paper and be 100% correct. Um, you just want to make sure that your equation is telling the story. And here we're saying, well, half of her stamp collection is gone, but then she added on 19. And if, if we looked at um, the example up here for the buses, uh, okay, your total is 390 kids. Um, you had 10 buses, and each bus has the same number of kids, and so if we multiply them, that'd be all of your bus kids. But then we need to add on your car kids, and, and these amounts together would equal your 390. And um, when we talk about Wilbur and the, the bouncy balls, um, you know, you had 81 balls, and you gave away three to each of your friends, and now you're left with six. These equations are telling the same stories. It's a very frustrating lesson uh, for some folks, uh, especially in early on, initially. Um, don't give up on it. Keep reading. Keep trying to, to find that relationship and find a way to write it algebraically. It gets better.